everybody, Tim Norris here, aka Grey Elephant. Hi, it's Carmen Norris. And welcome to another quick review by Grey Elephant Gaming. Today we're going to be laying down the tracks and firing up our engines in Russian Railroads by Z-Man Games. I don't think they could have done a better job on these components. I am so pleased that there are no cubes at all, and I really enjoy watching my tracks move along the rails. I love the components in this game. I love the fact that they didn't go with cubes, as Carmen said, but on top of that, they uh, even made the meeples look like Russians with furry Russian hats. Wonderful production. There are some tips in the rule book, but I wanted to tell you a couple that I noticed. First of all, don't neglect the coins. Make sure you grab them up at every chance. Because you get two coins by placing just one worker, and then you can use the coins as workers if you choose. Uh, secondly, the engineers are fantastic to have, because when you have them, you can't get blocked out of that spot. You put them to the side of your board, and then you know you can use that spot even at the end of your turn. Unlike some of my favorite Euro games, the only thing that's going to change from one game to the next in Russian Railroads is which engineers will be available in each game. Now, what's wonderful about these engineers is that they give you an available space that only you get to take advantage of. And at the end of the game, if you have the most engineers next to your player board, you score a bonus 40 points at the end of the game. Yeah! 40 points! They are a big deal. I find that in order to maximize my points each round, I like to focus on one railway and move it up a lot more than the others. And I usually choose St. Petersburg for this because it's going to give me the orange bonus tokens which naturally move up my other rails when I get them. Advancing tracks along the rails takes very careful planning because you can never advance one track past another track that's in front of it. And what I mean by that is, is that if you have one rail and you have a black track on it, and then you have a gray track behind it, you must first advance the black track in order to advance the gray track. Then on top of that, you need to pay attention to the engines that you're placing on each one of these rails the numeric value of this engine is going to determine how far along the rail it will extend for you to be able to score at the end of each round. What game would I compare this to? Well, uh, the first one that comes to mind is Pillars of the Earth because it's a pretty straightforward worker placement game. There are some spots you take just for points and I would say it also reminds me a bit of Stone Age but in Stone Age you have uh, resource management and this game really doesn't deal with resource management. Yeah, these are some of the first worker placement games I've played, but I find that a lot of the Euro worker placement style games I play now aren't so much straightforward worker placement, but this one is more so. So do I like the game? Yeah, I like the game. I like the game a lot. Um, I played five times so far, four times correctly. <laughs> I played with two players and I played with four players. Um, and I've enjoyed both aspects of that range. Um, the game's slick. Um, it feels like every decision that you're making in this game is impactful in one way or another. I like how um, even though you could get blocked off from certain action spaces, you should always be able to try to find a way to work around that, given the fact you have three rails you could work on, not to mention your factory line as well. Um, I think that what's cool is that um, given the turn order, you know, from first player to fourth player, I, I like that the fourth player... Because um, in a lot of Euro games, the, the last player to go typically gets hosed. And in this one, at least you get rewarded with uh, victory points for being in that position. Um, I like that aspect of it as well. And I like, too, that the first player can't block off the uh, first player marker by placing his own meeple there. You know, um, It's always open to grab for from second all the way down to fourth for somebody else to take the first player's uh, action spots. Um, I enjoy games where when I'm creating something on my player board that nobody's going to be able to come in and, and sabotage it or destroy it. So uh, I think that's a cool aspect that what I am creating, what I'm doing, it's going to stay and I can continue to try to um, uh, enhance that or increase it in one way or another as, as the game progresses. Um, I recommend it. I, I think I highly recommend Russian Railroads. I think it's one of those games that it gives you enough strategy, it gives you enough replayability, and it's one of those ones just production-wise with the components, with the gameplay and everything, I think it's going to hold its value for a long time. So do I like Russian Railroads? Well, yeah, I mean, I enjoy the game enough to play it with you if you want to play, and I'll try to beat my best score. But there are other Euro-style games, I would say, that I get into the theme more. This one feels a bit more mathy. Uh, it, it's more about the points and less about the theme. And so if I don't win the game, I feel a lot less accomplishment than, say, if I'm playing something like Terra Mystica or Village. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.
Thanks for watching. Bye. Griffin Gaming, from new releases to pre-orders. Griffin Gaming, enter in promo code GREYELEPHANT for 5% off your order.